الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وعز المرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر That's the last portion of the ayah of the Surah Al-Asr the surah, the chapter, is very small. And maybe it's a good thing to bring up. Some people, they might claim if Quran is a miracle <clears throat> and you Muslims, you say, you know, one of the aspects of that Miracle that its language is very eloquent, unique, and no one could make something similar to it because it's not written by a you know, regular human being. It's inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet, we look at Surah Al-Asr is very small, the chapter. Well, Asr, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر That's it, it's a chapter And the Quran challenged Quraysh Quraysh is the tribe of the Prophet and it was famous that they have one of the best poetry and literature. The Quran it challenged them to get a, a chapter similar to that in the Quran. So those people, what they are going to tell us usually? This is the typical question. It's a small chapter, couple letters, couple lines. You are telling me we cannot do something similar? Yes, we can. As Muslims, we had different opinions. This is off the record, written a little bit, but it's worth it. One of the opinions, they said, though sometimes a human being can come up with that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never make them capable to make something compete with the Quran. That's a theory. Another theory would say the miracle of the Quran is not just in the words. Because as you know, what's a miracle? When we say miracle, what do, what do, we, what do we mean by a miracle? What do you think, is a, what, what do you think about a miracle? If, if I ask you, hey, define a miracle, what do, what do you mean? What do you say? It's from God. So why I call it a miracle? It cannot be produced by man? Okay. What do you think? Same thing? By human being to create, you know, to avoid any discrimination. Okay. Any other opinion you'd like to share with us? You can come closer so, you know, we can have some good interaction here. What do you think? What's a miracle in your definition? I'm sorry? So it is beyond physics and chemistry and laws that we know? So in other words, do you believe that or do you think that a miracle is something beyond physics or against physics, chemistry, and sciences? Can we say that? Not against it. So, different form. This is another thing. See, when do we say a miracle? When do we say karama in Islam? We'll come back to the definition. Someone, we hear these stories. They are sick. 
they visit a shrine of Imam Ali, the shrine of the Prophet, the shrine of Imam Hussein, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them from his reward, they will be cured. Don't we hear these stories? Do we call this a miracle? Do we call it a miracle? In Islam, miracle, we call it in Arabic, mu'jiza. Mu'jiza. And a person like me, when he's old, okay, we say ajiz. I can't do much. That's it. I'm weak. I give up. Mu'jiza is something that a human being cannot come up with at that time, at that period. Very precisely. Because you tell me Jesus used to, to cure <coughs> people. Well, we can now find a proper medication and the cure people maybe. Similar diseases. You might claim that. So what's miracle then? Why do we call it mu'jiza? That means I cannot, you know, I cannot com you know, come up with that. It defeats my capabilities. Why? They say in Islam, for something to be considered a miracle, it has to have conditions. I don't want to go into details much, but it has to have some conditions. We'll talk about them. One of them is to be in a competition between mu'mineen and al-kafirin and without showing a miracle people will not believe so it's a very critical time in the timeline of prophethood in the timeline of the prophet any prophet Yani, if someone comes to the Prophet, he's asking him, Prophet, I want to believe in you. Can you make this water, you know, gold? What would be the answer of the Prophet? No. And the Quran said it. Qul subhana rabbi, hal kuntu illa basharan rasoola? It's not my job. In other words, miracle is not like Harry Potter thing, you know. Yeah, let's do it, you know. Have fun. No, it's not. Maybe we get used to marvels, okay. But... Miracle is not like this. The only time the Prophet apply a miracle, first under the permission of Allah, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wise, gives the okay, this is the time of the miracle. Otherwise, the miracle is not allowed. And secondly, has to be a huge competition. It's a matter of believing or not believing in the message among the nation that the Prophet that was sent to. Not something. And that's why, brothers and sisters, why this is important. When someone is criticizing our history, or when we read our history, we read in so many places that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi jami'an, they suffered, isn't it? Prophet Muhammad. Was everything to him easy going? He's, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stayed in Shu'ab Abi Talib under, sanct, sanct, uh, you know, under problems, sanctions, boycotting him for more than three years. Shu'ab Abi Talib. No one was allowed to give him food medication no one three years to a point they say the prophet has to eat plants like leaves and others so the question would be where is the miracle it's not the time for it you have to let the message run its you know run its course so you can be a realistic role model for your people and upcoming generations. Because when we suffer and when we go through problems while we are talking to people about Allah, when we are confronting shaitan, 
when we are confronting problems, we are not going to say a prophet has a special, you know, he was a VIP and he had his miracles and everything was fine with him. But me, I'm a poor person. And you know what? I'm going to give up and I'm, I want to quit believing. No. As you suffer, as you struggle, as you strive, as you put so much effort to be a better person, to improve your family, to improve your life, to improve your community, to improve a human being life, the Prophet has to go through proper, normal channels. And more than that, the Prophet used to say, as narrated, مَا أُوذِيَ نَبِيٌّ مِثْلَ مَا أُوذِيت No one got hurt among the Prophet as much as I got hurt. So where is the miracle? How many times the Prophet used the miracle? Yani, did you see the Prophet in battlefield tells people, hey, stop, let's read Quran, make some dua, and we are going to win the world. No, never ever. The Quran said, وَأَعِدُّ لَهُمْ Prepare. Prepare. Prepare yourself. Prepare. So, after 1,400 years, we have a generation that he wants everything to be smoothly downloaded and executed. Yani, give you an example. I like to go to Jannah. To him, Jannah is an application. And if I download it to my phone, that's it, I'll go to Jannah. How? Read Quran. I have app, you know, look. I downloaded the app, you know. I have three apps about Quran, you know, downloaded them on my phone. Yani, it's true, what do you think? Yani, your phone goes to Jannah and where you are going to be? If a matter of phones, there's not the way you go to heaven. Or you tell him Salah. I know, I'm, I know, I'm aware of Salah. I have two applications, a prayer application about Salah. Why? Because some people, they think, some people, they think, Jannah is granted for us. Just a little bit of good heart, and that's it, I go to Jannah. The rest is just rituals. Yani Allah is nice, Allah is merciful, Allah is generous, Allah is the most, you know, forgiving. So if I just come to the mosque once per year, pray once per year, be honest once per month, because it's against my business policies maybe, Okay, fine, Allah will forgive me. Or I go to Hajj. And when we go to Hajj, there is like a free ticket over there. Allah will forgive us. So let's accumulate all the problems till we go to Hajj. Does not work. So the idea here, you cannot even apply your own miracle if you have to go to Jannah. But we as Muslims, we as good believers, we don't have that concept. Alhamdulillah. Isn't it? We are safe. Yes, we do not take it the hard way, but we do not take it the easy way. We, are very, we live in a very balanced way, as I usually say. The Quran always gives us a nice formula. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. We use the advantage of being alive here by doing good and we, are, we ask for it. No one is telling you stay poor, live rigid life, you know, but at the same time, do not live in laxism. That means you are so relaxed to a point you don't want to obey laws. This is not right. So some people, they think the message of the Prophet, the power of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or any other Prophet used to be based on what? On miracles. No, it was not. The miracle is to prove and accredit that person as a Prophet. 
But it is not the main role in, ch in changing the mentality of people or winning a situation, all the situations. It's just for one time. It happened, our miracle, it's a continuous one. I was, uh, you know, I had a debate with a non-Muslim uh, person. I don't want to say a priest because I do not know what, what's his job, honestly. But anyway, he was telling me that Quran and Muhammad is a myth. Easy said. I told him why. He said, because you Muslims, you believe he went to a cave and he started having seizures. Because of these seizures, he wrote a book. I told him, I have two short answers. Maybe we'll talk about this later on. I said, first of all, it's amazing a person with a seizure will have a book that lived that much. That's something different, you know. I would love to have such kind of seizures. Because you're talking a book, we don't see a contradiction in it. And yet it talks about some scientific facts. Why a person in a desert where the ultimate technology back then is camels and tents, he's talking about a universe and the universe is expanding and he talks about a time where the sun will, be, will vanish and he talks about water and because of water we have living beings. How did he, why did he bother to talk about it? What kind of seizure is this? That's one thing. The second thing, I told him, sometimes, brother and sister, you have to read. And you have to challenge those who are challenging you. You should not feel weak. Because behind you, there is a real message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have to be proud of. Don't ever feel weak. Yes, you might say, I do not know. Go read about it. And you're going to see the evidences. A message that survived for 1,400 years. And among that message, we had very successful people. We had a civilization that reached Spain and stayed in Spain for more than 700 years. And had scholars that talk about medicine, math, physics, geography. Until now, in this community, we have lots of people that we are proud of. PhD holders, scientific people, best quality in this state. I'm not going to be ashamed or embarrassed about my religion. I feel proud of it. Especially, I reach to every person. I open my hand. Let's have a dialogue. It's all about peace. It's all about how to reach a tranquility. How to live together as a human being in a peaceful way. This is Islam. So anyway, the second portion I said, if you believe that Quran is a myth, you are mistaken. For simple reason. Because your book is a myth, not mine. What are you talking about? My book is a myth. I said yes. I said I believe in Moses and I believe in his miracles because Quran told me. Can you show me an evidence that all the miracles of, G of me Moses happened? Show. Where is that river? Where is that staff that Moses, Moses used? Where are the miracles? And when I believe in Jesus, peace be upon him, because Quran told me to believe in him. Can you show me as an evidence, historical evidence, where, where Jesus were able to cure blind people and sick ones? Where is it? Show it to me. But I believe in it because Quran told me. And Quran, it's still here. I still have it after 1,400 years. Can you tell me where are the words of Jesus or Moses? Show me a piece of paper that they wrote. 
or they are agreed that it is from them. Where is it? Quran was written in the time of the Prophet, memorized in the time of the Prophet, and was transferred to generation after a generation during the time of the Prophet. This is, we call it, a continuous, ever going miracle. Opposite to others. The others are gone. And what's nice about this miracle, brother and sister, it challenges our intelligence. It's a book. It's not just a piece of art we just take selfies, you know, for that. No. That means Allah wants us to be educated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be educated. To use our intelligence. To rationalize things. If there is something good, you want to prove it about this religion when it comes to scientific revolutions. In this month, what's the most thing we are attached to? Reading what? Quran. There is no religion on earth that pushes someone to read a book like what? Islam. No religion. No religion whatsoever. You can read that one page here during the year. You know, you see people, they don't even open the Bible. Maybe they don't even have copies of Bible. Except Muslims, they are very famous, not just reading the Quran. They are famous about even memorizing the Quran or portion of it. Whether we know how to speak Arabic or not, we try to memorize what? A verse here and a verse there. All this, what is a sign of? That means I want you to be equipped with knowledge. And the knowledge is through reading. Because Quran, we do not just read an ayah. We read explanations. We correlate that. We associate it with what we have around us. So this miracle is still alive did not vanish. This is the definition of miracle. Another thing about miracle, it is not against science. A miracle is just a way that has its own platform. It's not like the Quran is giving us a miracle or the you know, Islam or religion shows us a miracle against science and physics. No, maybe we have laws beyond science and it. Somehow we have limitations in those fields. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows more about them. And there is a circumvented way around them. And in my philosophy, and I might be wrong, Miracles, brother and sister, sometimes I look at them as a portal, a key to upcoming inventions. Miracles, they are mentioned in the Quran and they were during our human race to challenge human intelligence so they can make them human, humans, okay? Make them what? More creative. Do not just look at things within the same box. Get out of the box. There is a way. We talk about a submarine. What's the ship of Noah? It was not a regular ship. It was like a submarine. Because it was going through, uh, as the Quran literally mountains of waves that means in and out immersing into water if you want to talk about curing certain diseases that Jesus used to do it now we have this but where is the difference the difference a miracle it's done by Allah and has its own way but our similar, you know, solutions 
that mimic that, we use regular laws in a very primitive, normal way. Till another invention shows up, we have this, yeah, it can happen. I'll give you an example. And here I conclude. We did not get the chance to finish the surah, okay? But that's good then. Uh, if I take a look at why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Mary to have a birth for Jesus without a father. That's a very challenging thing. There is a reason for sure. But now, with the advancement of science, we start talking about cloning. We start talking about a huge advancement in genetics. So it opened a door. I'm not saying we are going to be able to do that. But that, that kind of challenges really help us. This is, we call it a miracle. In addition to miracle, in Arabic we have something we call karama. Karama is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward people in a way or another to solve their problem. And we see this a lot among Muslims, not just Shia, among Muslims. And even among, you know, Christians as well. A person is pure because of his trust of Allah. He visited a special shrine and he asked Allah in a very pure heart with dedication. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, give him a solution and cure him from his disease. And we see this a lot in history. And while I'm coming, you know, to the lecture today or to yesterday, I'm sorry. You know, I met a person, a priest. He was telling me, oh, you're Muslim. You should go, go read about Fatima in Spain because they say she is a Muslim lady and she is the daughter of the prophet. And she was, she appeared to a couple of children telling them about God and stuff like that. And they had a church for her. They call it the church of Fatima. I did not get the chance to go over that. Maybe it's a good chance for you to talk about it. But the idea is this kind of karamat, which is plural of karama, we have it in our culture. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. So the idea is do not give up prayers and do not say no solution. No, there is always a hope because you are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.